Thank you, everyone. I'm Dennis, founder of Mirror. Uh, really excited to be here. I'll talk about my background in a little bit. Thank you for having me. You guys bring awesome people together. Uh, this is a big, big honor to present here. So the presentation here, I'm going to be talking about building an on-chain brand. Uh, and the, 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 the subtitle is about how projects and creators can leverage NFTs to activate their communities and build long-term engagement. Really excited about that. I think top topics everyone is interested in. Um, basically, we're seeing some really exciting new ways, especially companies and projects that are leveraging NFTs just to build really engaged communities. And it's just completely new marketing strategy and community building strategy. I'm going to talk a bit about that and also how Mirror fits into that, that journey. All right, so just 15 minutes. I'm going to give a brief introduction, talk about on-chain brands, talk about value this is creating for both creators and collectors. Give a little case study of a project you guys may have heard of called, called Base and talk about some additional examples and we'll open up to questions. We're excited about the, the question part of this. So intro, um, as Meta was saying, uh, I go way back with the Variant team, which a uh, big honor, uh, Variant was, was our first investor at the company. And yeah, Jesse and I were actually co-founders of a company called Media Chain. Media Chain, I think, is kind of a, a intellectual precursor to the, a lot of ideas behind Mirror. We were exploring ideas of creator entribution, uh, uh, content provenance using blockchains. And it's a project that actually started before Ethereum existed, before NFTs existed. But what we, what we, really, what we were really trying to create and invent was NFTs, which I think solved a lot of the problems we were exploring at the time. And had a, a fun one year stint at Spotify before being on the founding team of Basic Z Crypto, where also continued working with Jesse and met people like Lee and Nina, who, who are super awesome. And again, Variant, Variant is very special to me. And now to Mirror in 2020 and have been working on that for the past few years. And just a little kind of segue into uh, what I'm going to be talking about here is about a year ago, I published a blog post called Collect Is Then You Like. And, and the premise of it was that, you know, these core interaction models, you know, actions we take in Web2 platforms, you know, liking content, following creators, following brands, following projects, which is kind of becoming more and more devalued. These were just clearly these, you know, siloed interactions that lived in databases. They weren't very, very valuable. And as we were studying NFTs more and more closely, this new action, the collect action, the mint action, was looking similar to Web2 interactions, but it was just way more valuable. It was creating new forms of business model, new forms of community engagement. Uh, and we think that it's revolutionized how creators think about their practices online, but also that brands and projects, you know, companies as big as Coinbase, and I think it's going to resonate with a lot of what you guys are building here, you know, projects can leverage NFT strategies to grow much bigger and much more engaged communities and be much more successful. So what is an on-chain brand? And I want to start with kind of putting it in perspective of, of legacy brands and the problems with them. And the main issue I think is that just if you look at a legacy brand, if, if you understand an on-chain brand is that just, they're just way more passive, these passive audiences, right? Even though brands in invest so much money in 2022 alone, over a trillion dollars was invested in marketing globally, it's really limited. It's really fallen short. And I think the, the main issues are that these creators, they really lack ownership, right? These networks are in total control. They, they can boot participants as they want and creators don't own the content that they share. And a creator or project may be leveraging multiple platforms like Twitter, Facebook, but it creates this fragmentation because of the core architecture. You know, these themes are, are very familiar to everyone. You know, these identity systems are not interoperable. The data is siloed. You have this, these relationships kind of in fragmented platforms. The data is fragmented. It's really hard to work with. And then I think the most important thing is that these Web2 actions are low value, as I was saying before. There's really no incentive to meaningfully participate in the creator journey. And I think as, as brands and projects try to create communities that are way more actively involved and way more participatory, Web2 is really falling short, right? And just to sum it up, it's like, you can like a post, but you can never own it. You can never own that, be part of that journey, own a piece of that story that, that a project is trying to, to create. I think on-chain brands, as a foil to that, they enable active communities to, to the passive audiences of Web2. And what, are the, what is that predicated on? One, it's connection, right? NFT-based experiences, we think, facilitate this notion of digital belonging. I think the best brands have leveraged you know, physical assets, whether it's, you know, think of fashion, think of sports teams where, you know, merchandise, collectibles are so important to create a, a, a sense of physical belonging in the real world. 
And I think we've, until NFCs, we haven't had a technology to facilitate that digitally. And this new connection is possible with like, like individuals who are becoming collectors that collect these NFTs. And the foundation of that is ownership. So when you give your supporters a stake in what they, in the project they love with NFTs, you create these really powerful incentives. Your fans want to help build with you. They want to improve what you're doing. They want to spread the word by marketing your project and they want to become patrons of what you're doing. And because it's built on, on blockchains and using NFTs and open protocols, you get an interoperability out of the box. Again, unlike this channel fragmentation we're seeing, the core identity primitive of Web3 is a wallet, right? And you know, wallets are interoperable with applications and they can be used across multiple channels. You can see your, for example, your mirror users as wallets, but maybe th those same collectors, those same subscribers that you see as wallets, you can also see them as users of your own products. You know, if you're building a DeFi protocol where people interact with you on chain, it's the same identity system. And this interoperability is really, really powerful. And then the flip side of that is because what's in your wallet is public, it's a way for your fans to share what they love because it's in their wallet. And an NFT is kind of this new form of, of cookie that's way more powerful. And then finally, because NFTs are programmable, there's this completely new design space of, of rewards and incentives. You can incentivize your collectors and reward your early supporters by, by building that into to the NFTs. I think just to tie it all together, we're going from Web 2 social graphs to Web 3 socioeconomic graphs. And unlike, you know, before creators produced content that lived in a database that had these weak interactions of likes and follows, content is now assets, right? Content is now NFTs. You can own it, you can put it in your wallet. And the collector is now an owner, a stakeholder. They're a way more active socioeconomic participant. And I think like, th this new kind of socioeconomic graph is emerging. So you probably recognize a bunch of these projects and logos. These are actually all mirror users. And they're all taking this on-chain brand strategy, NFT strategy to, to make their community members, collectors, owners of what they're doing. And what's uniting all of them is that these on-chain assets are creating this, this socioeconomic graph through ownership. So what, what, what is the value of this for creators? So as I was saying before, these passive followers and uploaders, now they're active collectors. And collecting is a super high intent action. So before, you know, people talk about the friction of crypto, you know, gas costs are, are, are a big problem. Um, you know, using a wallet is clunky, et cetera. But the fact that the NFT ecosystem con continues to grow, I think it proves that what these community members see on the other side of, of that collect action is this something really, really valuable, uh, uh, something really worthwhile doing, even though there's friction. I think as friction decreases, this is just going to grow more and more. I think you, the flip side of that is this notion of economic participation. It's not just a social kind of uh, a follower or audience member. This is an economic participant in what you're, work, what you're creating. And what's really powerful, and this is what Mirror enables with our kind of hybrid subscription um, uh, and email and wallet identity, is that you can associate a wallet address with an email. So you have both a way to re-engage your audience and communicate with them, but also you, you, have, you have their wallet. And the, the notion of wallets is really powerful because your brand can now live in the wallet of your community member, and it's a way for them to propagate what you're doing. So think of you know, the, the way you wear you know, uh, maybe a company t-shirt, you know, you're a big fan of, of NASA or, or SpaceX, you know, it's part of your identity. When you wear it on the street, you kind of signal what, what you're in, what you believe in. We, again, we believe that NFTs enable that digitally, and that wasn't possible before, before this technology. And it's all about open data and the, the activity being this launching. And then finally, because of this new patronage relationship, that creators have way more independence and design space to create something that fans see themselves in. And again, I think like this notion of participation, uh, being part of something, the engagement is way, 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 way higher quality and better. So on the collector side, I mentioned before, like think of it as a brand T-shirt. Uh, maybe it's a it's a it's a band, a music band that you really love, or you know a, a tote bag for your favorite magazine, like the New Yorker tote bag is a a way to signal identity as you're walking down the streets of New York City that, you know, you're into, you're kind of intellectual, you're into this certain type of content, you know, you, you, you build your identity around the information you consume. I think NFTs, you can think of as digitally native swag you can get from a project and your community can build their identity around. I think unlike generic swag, it's a way to record the community member's support from day one. And you can build rewards on top of that, right? You can, uh, you can represent status, you know, something as simple as a Discord role, but maybe more power, more, more powerful privileges or voting rights in your community. 
it's a way to say the, the, how close you're affiliated with the project. It's a way to give, get an equity stake in the project. And I think s- some of the more advanced part of the, you know, they, they invite the community members to be part of the creative process, part of the decision making. And there's this, uh, there's this uh, powerful stat uh, done by McKinsey around traditional brands that brands that provide personalized experiences are seeing way higher engagement and, and their customers are more likely to buy from them. And I think also the fact that NFTs are programmable, it's this new design space of personalization um, enabled by the programmability of NFTs and you know, generate NFTs being, being one of them. It's this kind of emer- emergent uh, field of design. So I'm going to give a quick study, quick case study. Um, I mentioned BASE earlier. Uh, many of you are probably familiar with BASE. Uh, I think uh, in one of the variant events, uh, we have actually, uh, Jesse Pollock, the lead behind BASE, uh, gave a presentation about uh, the, the strategy there. But BASE is, uh, it's an Ethereum scaling solution uh, incubated by Coinbase. Uh, they're building an L2. I think they've taken on a very interesting community building, marketing, storytelling strategy uh, that's kind of on-chain first, mint first. They're trying to leverage as much Web3 web creator tools as they can. They're trying to mint NFTs uh, around their entire journey. And it's, I think it's been paying off really well uh, to build a really engaged community for them. So I'm going to talk about a little bit about their marketing playbook. So BASE started off with a Genesis NFT. I think this is a, a, big, a big pattern emerging across the ecosystem. When you announce yourself to the world, you know, we, we used to have white papers maybe you know, back in uh, uh, 2017, 2015. Today we're seeing the, the, the Genesis NFT. When you announce it, it's a first touch one with your community and it gives them a way to, to own uh, your logo. It's a way to, you know, their brand to, to live in their wallet. And Mirror has one of our hallmark features, it's called Subscribe to Mint. It's a way to offer a free NFT edition, free to mint. Uh, it, you know, it's a way for your community, kind of a gift to your community. But what's unique about it is y- your audience is required to subscribe to your mirror publication with their email in order to collect the free NFT. And it's this really powerful way to activate your subscribers. You give them this free NFT, and at the genesis of your project, you, you bootstrap this communication channel with your audience that then as you tell your journey and track the milestones of your community, uh, you have a way to uh, send, send an update directly to, to your community environment. So based with very successful this, over 400,000 NFTs minted at the time is one of the most popular uh, NFTs on Ethereum. They're also leveraging this tactic of partnership celebration. So BASE is built uh, on the Optimism stack, Optimism technology. They made this NFT to celebrate the, the collaboration. I think what was really clever and smart here was that BASE started off, you know, it was an unknown project, unknown brand, they didn't have uh, an established following. This let them cross-pollinate user bases. Optimism had a, a, a big engaged audience already. This NFT, which was also shared by Optimism, exposed the Optimism community to this new project being built on top of Optimism. So it's again, celebrating collaboration with a different community. We're seeing a bunch of projects, NFT projects doing collaborations, crossovers. And we think NFTs visually give you this visual representation, again, something for your community to own. So over 200,000 collectors minted this. There's also a tactic of community celebration. So th- this, this NFT is actually a screenshot of an email the base team got from a community member. The community member, they actually own base.eat, the ENS name, and they said, hey, I really like what you guys are doing. I really like the vision behind base. I want to gift you base.eat so you can have an on-chain native name. You know, it's kind of very vision aligned with you. It was really awesome celebration of a gesture of goodwill from the community. And again, kind of leveraging NFTs to just, you know, propagate this, you know, story to everyone to put it in their wallets. And it was form of two-way marketing, right? That the narrative building doesn't have to come top down from the, the marketing team or the founders. You can actually elevate community voices. And, you know, the fact that you're making collectibles is a powerful way to, to place it in the wallet. Your audience. Another tactic is celebrating uh, in-person events using POAPs and kind of uh, collectibles of, of representing IRL events. So a couple of months ago, BASE had a big presence at ETH Denver. Um, they, they gave talks. They had some hackathons uh, around, around their testnet. And they made this entity called uh, BASE Friends at ETH Denver. And I think it was just a really powerful way to, again, continue telling their journey to create a new milestone in their community, you know, celebrate the 5,000 uh, people that visited their booth and they have this cool animation. And I think, again, it's this really cool combination of IRL events with, with, with giving you something to collect. And you know, their blog post 
they published a blog post on Mirror that announced some of the stats and the success of the event. But again, it was it was uh, punctuated with with something to collect to celebrate the journey. And then finally, I think the most prevalent tactic is the milestone celebrations. So a few weeks ago, Base announced that early August they have a, a date set for launching Mainnet, and this is obviously you know all, all of their community members work. With. This is something they've been waiting for for a while. Um, for an L2 that's going to integrate with the Coinbase ecosystem is is something people are really excited about. And it was just this cool animation that commemorated that milestone. So a lot of projects are also leveraging something similar when you know they're launching features, they have a release, they 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 launch on mainnet, they give their community something to collect to commemorate that milestone. And and it's this big celebration uh, that again lives in the wallet. So just to recap, I think what we're seeing emerge is not just the, you know doing an, an NFT as a one-off, but seeing a coherent strategy where you have strong tactics for activating your user base with this genesis NFT of your brand, but also a coherent recurrent strategy to re-engage your audience, you know, giving them something to engage with every week and do it in this much higher value on-chain uh, in wallet way, where there's both narrative consistency, you know, think of it as a, you know, a screenplay with, you know, different acts or like a series uh, on TV, you want narrative consistency, but also I think Base has done a really great job of aesthetic consistency. Like every, if you look at all the NFTs together, it's really consistent creative direction. And you really feel like, you know, you want to collect them all. You want to complete the series and you're proud of showing it off in your wallet. And just to share some stats, I think it's, it's been really exciting. So, uh, over 100,000 writing NFTs have been minted. And just another feature of Mirror that all content you publish on Mirror, every uh, all written content, it's collectible by default. So without doing any extra work, if your team already has an editorial strategy, maybe you're doing a newsletter, maybe you're doing just you know weekly updates celebrating your ecosystem, Mirror lets you make those collectible by default. And it's just another touch point for your community to, to collect your content. So over 100,000 have been minted of those. Uh, Base has over 60,000 total collectors. And we're really excited about this, the recurrent collector stat that over 26,000 collectors have collected more, more than once. And some super fans are, are trying to collect everything uh, they're putting out. On visitors, we're also seeing that on the order of 10 times more visitors for a post that has an NFT embedded. So just if there's something to collect, the amount of traffic content uh, garners is, is orders of magnitude higher, which is really exciting. And then finally, base is about to hit 500,000 total subscribers, just showing that, you know, in only a few months, uh, they're able to much more quickly, uh, bootstrap a really engaged subscriber base. And we think that NFTs is, is a key reason for that. If you compare that to, you know, a typical Substack strategy, you know, people refer to kind of like the newsletter slog, but you have to publish content weekly, monthly for a really long time to kind of linearly grow your audience. We're seeing NFTs as this incentive to much, much more quickly activate a subscriber base. So just some additional examples and just before I end, um, this isn't only working for big projects or companies like Base, it's also working for small creators. I think this is actually the origin of the playbook is, is how creators kind of market you know, their, their NFT projects. So Necknell is a small artist collective that uh, recently released this uh, NFT drop. And they use Mirror and other NFT tools to also kind of build awareness of their project. Um, they released a few mint passes kind of in this aesthetic of a video poster, but there was three of them to like, they, they were free NFTs. They used this to uh, bootstrap uh, a way to communicate with their audience. And the early collectors of the free NFT were then added to the allow list. So they just created more engagement through this kind of built up to the eventual campaign. And it was this combination of storytelling of, of releasing free NFTs. And again, saw kind of, uh, this cohort Twitter collectors were, were minting more than once, which is really exciting. And again, Mirror really helped them associate the, the, their on-chain address with an email address and made it easy for the community to keep in touch uh, with their fans. And they ended up actually adding every Mirror subscriber to their allow list because all your subscribers are also wallets. They got added to the allow list. Uh, the allow list members got a discount and the, the, the eventual drop was a big success. So we see subscribe to and working really well for, for all kinds of projects. Linea, uh, a few months ago, activated uh, in about a week uh, an audience of 100,000 collectors. Optimism is also one of our most engaged users. Uh, they, had, they did this, they have this really cool Phoenix kind of mascot that um, was a free NFT that over 200,000 people collected. And also seeing 
partnerships being a, a really big theme. Um, I, I imagine a lot of you are familiar with, with Zorb, say, and, and this kind of Zora brand asset that they've been using o- over the past year. Uh, and there's there's been a Zorb collaboration with with every brand. So there's a Zorb with Optimism, um, Zorb with Gallery, and I think it's really awesome unified aesthetic of this sphere that is is this the Zora brand that's kind of become iconic at this point, using it for crossovers with communities again to cross pollinate um, audiences. And then Interface is a, a Web3 mobile app that's kind of an activity on-chain activity explorer. They recently integrated mirror content into their product and did an NFT using the mirror logo with, with a kind of a representation in their product. So again, these crossovers are, are a really powerful way to leverage NFTs. And that, that's basically it. Um, it yeah, so uh, if you guys want to, uh, uh, we'd love to invite you know all the all the great builders uh, are present in this video call to check out Mirror. We we we'd be happy to you know answer any questions one on one. Also help you guys onboard. Um, we have this notion of uh, subdomains that we've been selectively giving out to kind of uh, power users and, and really credible projects. And we'd love to invite you guys to uh, set up your subdomain and, and start publishing on, on Mirror. So uh, feel free to DM me. On Twitter, um, you can check out our development blog where we have our, our, our announcements and kind of our, our biggest features explained. And that's also my blog. Um, I'm sure Variant will follow up as well. Uh, we'll get in touch. Thanks, everyone.